please like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. So you could hear them coming from a seemed like a mile away. Thump, 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 thump. You could tell there were rows and rows and rows of them. Thump, 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 thump. I pulled my bed covers up to my face. Thump, 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 thump. And then I could see them. I could see them coming. They were coming up the side of the bed. They were coming over the top of the bed. Thousands upon thousands of pancakes holding guns. Thump, thump, thump. <laughs> I rolled my eyes, I'm like, okay, dad, I won't eat all the pancakes next Sunday. Do I have to hear this story again? My dad was that kind of dad. You know, the one who wanted to teach you lessons by telling you stories? Like the story when you asked for extra money to take a cab home after partying all night, and he said, when I was growing up, the subway cost a nickel, and I could only afford to ride one way. And that was my dad. And my brothers and I would roll our eyes and say, oh, here we go again. But then every now and again, my dad would say, let me tell you about my childhood. And we would gather around the table because we knew we were about to hear a story of Harlem. My dad was born over 100, well, 100 years ago to be exact, in Hell's Kitchen. And like many African-American families at that time, and much like what happened to African-American families in what is now known as Central Park, they were pushed out. And so they moved uptown to Harlem, USA, my dad arriving in 1926 during the Harlem Renaissance. And he would tell these amazing stories. Now my dad's stories of the Harlem Renaissance really didn't have much to do with Langston Hughes or Zora Neale Hurston or any of those folks. He was a six year old kid. His stories of the Harlem Renaissance had to do with living in Harlem during that time. It was about the uptowners and the downtowners. And the, de and the demarcation point was 125th Street. So if you lived above 125th, you were an uptowner. And if you lived below, you were a downtowner. And they, they had such a good time. Only in Harlem could he be considered a minor celebrity because his aunt Christina was the housemaid for the notorious Madam Polly Adler and she would come home with tales of Dutch Schultz and what was happening in the brothel. And my dad would take those stories and tell his friends, and he was a minor celebrity. And every now and again, Dutch Schultz would tip extra good, and she would buy ice cream for the entire neighborhood. There were the stories my dad told about the time that the water main broke in uptown, and Duke Ellington was seen screaming running down the street because he had some conk in his hair that they couldn't wash out. I tended to hear that story every time I thought about getting a perm. <laughs> but my dad would love to tell his stories about his best friends, Vincent and Wilma and Leroy and Douglas, and how the, they would play games and have fun, and oh, they had to walk a mile in the snow to get to school from McComb's place up to Sugar Hill. And as a little kid, I thought it was a five mile journey and not a five block journey. <laughs> but it was all a part of his storytelling, and I loved it. But probably the best story my dad told was about the ingenuity they had as kids. They lived on McCombs Place, across from what was going to become Yankee Stadium. And Yankee Stadium was new, and all the bigwigs would come with their cars, and he and his friends came upon an idea. There was an empty lot right next door to Yankee Stadium. They would create a sign saying, parking here, $5. <laughs> they convinced people that they were the, the people responsible for that lot. And they told them, for $5, we'll watch your cars and make sure nobody messes with them. And by the second inning, they were all gone, celebrating with all the $5 bills that they had in their pockets. My dad's Harlem was magical. It was special. And it was important. He and all his friends decided to raise their families in the same neighborhood in Queens. But every year, they journeyed back uptown to the Uptown of Downtowners dance. And the morning after was like a holiday in my home because my dad would talk about all the people he had seen who he hadn't seen in years, and he would begin to tell the stories of Harlem and what a magical, mystical place it was, and he would sprinkle fairy dust all over the house telling us these stories. Little did he know that 11 years later, I would move to Harlem. I would come home to his home. And where he rode the A train, I run the streets during the marathon. And where he partied at the Cotton Club, I put on a pair of jeans. He would put on zoot suits, 
and go to the Cotton Club, and I would put on a pair of jeans and go party with my friends on Harlem Day. But his Harlem became my Harlem, and his home became my home. And only in Harlem can you find yourself in the stories that your dad told you as you walk down the street and see all the places he talked about. Thanks. Yeah.